When looking at uh, biology, one of the most common um, things that you're going to look at it, are really the cells. And the, and the outer part of the cell is a membrane. And the membrane of a cell is considered selectively permeable, which means it allows only certain things or selective things to be able to pass in and out of the cell through this membrane. And the movement of things inside the cell or towards the outside of the cell is some kind of a diffusion. Pretty much it's a natural movement of particles in and out of the cell. There are four types of diffusion that we're going to look at. Uh, the first one is a simple diffusion. Right. First one is a simple diffusion. That's the one we're going to actually look at. And pretty much this simple diffusion is just really going through the membrane. Now there is a second type of simple diffusion. I won't rewrite the word simple. Well, I will write diffusion, I guess. Um, but that will be through what we call transmembrane right? transmembrane channel proteins. So these are proteins that span across the phospholipid bilayer, as I'm going to show you. And it allows particles that are slightly larger to pass through easily. Right? And not to, not to, I guess, this, to kind of differentiate this simple type of diffusion with step number three, which is called facilitated diffusion. And this one also has these transmembrane channel proteins in them uh, that orient. Now, the thing is, is that these transmembrane channel proteins actually um, reconfigure. They reconfigure themselves to allow larger uh, particles like uh, glucose to kind of come into uh, and out of the cell. And the last thing we're going to look at is active transport. Right. And active transport is the only one that is really different from all of these, right? Because this one requires energy. Now, these three here, let me change the color. Uh, these three are what we call passive transport and this passive transport is really it's a it's a passive way of looking at movement so it's so pretty much it really doesn't do any work it, it just pretty much allows naturally particles to move in or out of the cell without really uh, anything stopping it except for you know pretty much once we call reaching an equilibrium or a dynamic equilibrium but we'll talk about that so we're going to focus more on these two uh, the simple diffusion and the um, with uh, through the membrane and through the transmembrane channel protein and of course we're going to look at uh, eventually the facilitated diffusion and then lastly we're going to look at what we call active transport now let's go up here and look at what we call this passive transport and the simple diffusion so in terms of simple diffusion right so here we have the extracellular fluid so out here this is the outside part of the cell down here this is the inside of the cell and i label there uh the cytoplasm so things that cells need right we look at uh water we look at um, oxygen, right? These are particles that are very, very small. So particles, these particles that are very, very small easily pass through this, what we call 
phospholipid bilayer. And this is this membrane here is what we call pretty much a phospholipid bilayer. And it's a bilayer because there are two layers. So if you notice here, this is uh, a larger version of this um, pretty much this phospholipid bilayer, you know, just a, uh, a little piece of it, right? So this is our phospholipid. And if we look at this part here, this is what we call the hydrophilic end, right? Hydrophilic means water loving. Right, and this hydrophilic end is pretty much where you'll find your phosphate. Uh, you will find also your glycerol groups. Glycerol. This bottom end, these legs here, um, pretty much are what we call our fatty acids, and these are what we call pretty much. hydrophobic so they're scared of water they don't really mix very well with water um, so let's um, erase some of this here and go back so this is our membrane here and as we said the membrane the phospholipid bilayer which is the membrane is selectively permeable and as we I've shown you here uh, things like water and oxygen easily pass through think about a waste right we, we breathe out carbon dioxide carbon dioxide easily can pass through this membrane to to you know get expelled right things that are a little bit larger right like um, like glucose right so here's our glucose molecule pretty much they're gonna hit the membrane and not be able to really uh, make their way out um, other things pretty much we've got um, our triglycerides uh, again they're too big so they're gonna hit the uh, the membrane come out same thing with nucleic acids they're also a little bit too big to allow the uh, the membrane so this here, the allowing of these small types of particles through the phospholipid bilayer is what we call simple diffusion. Now, how does simple diffusion move? Well, the thing is, particles move along what we call a concentration gradient. So it's gonna move along a concentration gradient. So what does that mean? That means that particles will move from an area that is highly concentrated, high concentration, to an area that is low concentration. And, and how do I, I kind of express this, this analogy? And think about someone who um, is maybe smelling really good. You know, you spray your uh, perfume, your cologne first thing in the morning, and of course around you, it is very concentrated with that perfume smell, that cologne smell. And then ultimately, as you leave the bathroom uh, and maybe others, let's say in, in a nearby room, are able to smell that, right? Um, the thing is, before they're not able to smell it, right? Because you sprayed it, let's say, in the bathroom, you keep the bathroom doors open and then your bedroom, you can still smell the, um, the cologne or the perfume because the particles have been bumping around with particles in the air and moving from the highly concentrated bathroom to the lowly concentrated, um, let's say, bedroom, right? The same thing goes with if you were to spray it, let's say, in a small corner of a room and the opposite corner, give it some time, you'll be able to smell um, that spraying of, um, of the cologne. So particles, just like this, water is going to move from a high concentration to a low concentration, which means the cell is going to need water, right? Uh, so, the, so all of a sudden, same thing with oxygen. You breathe in oxygen, and the oxygen is going to be highly concentrated outside of the cell, and it's going to make its way inside the cell, because inside the cell, it'll have less oxygen, right? Because once it's been used up. All of a sudden, carbon dioxide, right, which is the waste product, is highly concentrated here and it's gonna move outside of the cell because outside of the cell it has a lower concentration.
The fusion is pretty much a natural process that occurs pretty much between uh, because particles are constantly mo moving, right? So these particles here, they're constantly moving, right? They're constantly vibrating. So let's imagine here now this uh, this beaker, and we've got uh, a membrane that is small enough. Right? Don't let them move the small pieces here of this membrane. So this is the membrane separating this beaker here. And don't, assume that we don't, you know, these particles are a lot smaller, right? or, or at least this membrane allows for movement in and out. So what we have here, right? We've got 12 particles. So we've got a high concentration of particles on this left side of this beaker. This right side of this beaker has a very low concentration so what's gonna happen is particles are gonna move between the two membranes so all of a sudden here particles have moved from the area that was highly concentrated to the area that it was low concentrated until they reach something called a dynamic a dynamic e equilibrium which means really it's a state of balance where the particles are equal on both sides but now they don't just stop there they're constantly moving so what's gonna happen is one more particle might move in here another one is gonna move in there and then so on and so on and then one more kind of moves in here and then another one moves in here and so this you know this dynamic equilibrium is factored in to remain right uh, the same concentration on both sides of the membrane. Now the rate or the speed of this diffusion depends also on things like temperature, right? Uh, temperature pretty much, um, concentration, of the solute also determines, right? Diffusion occurs faster at high temperatures Right? So temperatures that are high will allow for quicker movement, right? Why? Because if you think about the, um, the, the molecular theory about how particles start to move quicker as temperature increases. So these particles are going to start to move a lot quicker. Okay, so now also faster moving, you know, molecules, they spread out faster. They reach this dynamic equilibrium a lot quicker. So also, if we had the same number of solute particles on both sides, again, um, pretty much this dynamic equilibrium will also be reached a lot quicker.